Alright, yesterday we talked about, uh, or I think we concluded with talking about this vector, vector algebra that we can do. Uh, we can add them, we can multiply them, we can uh, subtract them, all that kind of stuff. We can multiply by uh, whole numbers, fractions. Uh, we have the zero vector, we have um, basically the multiplicity of identity, the additive identity existing inside these, these properties. Uh, which is really nice, and, and it really opens the door for what we did today. Um, what we're going to be doing, and what we're interested in, if you see some of the homework in, in web assignments, there are some storage problems at the end. Okay? Uh, and I want to give you an efficient way of doing those storage problems. You already have one way of doing it. Okay? You know what the law of signs and law of cosines are. But those can be kind of messy sometimes with the questions that we're going to do. Uh, and I'll show the approach both ways. but. Changing our vectors into what we call um, component form or unit vector form uh, is going to open the door for us to be able to use uh, these properties and kind of bypass um, the law of cosine. Okay? Uh, so th this stuff becomes very useful. So as we work through today, uh, the first you know handful of things that we do, you might be saying, well, this this is kind of silly or, or redundant. Uh, you might say, well, it's kind of obvious that this exists, so this is the uh, kind of the format that we're doing. Uh, but I think it will open your eyes to um, why we need to do it when we see the story problem. Okay, so I, I guess the first thing I want I want to go to, just so that you 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 realize what I'm, what I'm trying to say here, is that we are going to be asked this question here in a little bit. So if an airplane heads due north at 300 miles per hour experience a 40 mile an hour crosswind uh, flowing in the direction of north 30 degrees east, that's shown in the figure. So the red vector is your airplane, the red vertical vector is your airplane, uh, and all this red vector and all those blue vectors are your crosswind. They want to know, okay, because this plane is set at 300 miles per hour and it's got this crosswind kind of going, pushing it, right? Okay, it's almost a tailwind, does that make sense? So it's assisting it, right? So the airplane is going to be traveling fast in 300 miles per hour, does that make sense? We want to figure out what that actual speed of the airplane is. Okay. Um, there's a question in your homework that says uh, a lady is on a cruise liner, and the cruise liner is, is traveling at 40 miles per hour or whatever, but she's walking uh, on the deck at some angle at like 4 miles per hour. How fast is she actually traveling relative to the walk? Okay. Meaning that she, she's moving more than 4 miles per hour, isn't she? Because the boat is assisting her movement, does that make sense? Um, so there, there, there are questions that we can do, um, kind of relative to some other vector, which is which is nice, okay? Um, and, and actually find actual speeds. Um, so the questions that that are asked in that scenario are: express the velocity of the airplane relative to the air. So that means without any wind, how fast is the airplane be moving in what direction? Uh, do the same thing for the wind then. Uh, and then say, okay, what would be the true velocity of the airplane? Okay. Uh, actually, how fast is it moving? And in what direction is it moving um, because of that crosswind? So everything we do is going to be kind of built up uh, to be able to answer those questions efficiently. Okay. Um, Whenever we're in mathematics and we get something that is a unit whatever, we've already seen unit circles, okay? Now we're talking about unit vectors. Whenever something's identified as a unit, it means it's a length of one, okay? Um, unit vectors become very, very, very important to us throughout uh, linear algebra, uh, which is actually, linear algebra is just kind of analyzing all your vector stuff, okay? All your, all your work with the matrices and vectors that you can do. Um, and in that minute's for basic for a lot of other math courses. Uh, but um, we use unit vectors a lot to talk about like uh, surface tension and uh, how you move on surfaces and stuff like that. <coughs> um, people that uh, engineer like roller coasters and those types of things are interested in certain forces. Uh, they're interested in unit forces and uh, basically normal forces, that kind of stuff, so you don't fly out of your uh, roller coaster seat or whatever. Um, so this stuff is, is, is very, very useful 
beyond. We're just tracking the surface from the surface. Um, but it's just a vector of length one from dual vectors, so for instance, the vector w uh, equals three fifths of a four fifths to the unit vector. So we're going to get three fifths tells us the horizontal direction, the four fifths tells us the vertical direction. And that's the case. very, 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 very useful unit vectors are i and j, or vectors that we denote or call i and j. And all that means essentially is that they are um, the vectors that i moves in a horizontal direction and j moves strictly in a vertical direction. Alright, so i, i is a vector uh, that moves in a horizontal direction only, okay, uh, and it has a magnitude of one, okay, um, so we, we label it as i, but in component form it's one comma zero, okay, the one meaning that's the horizontal distance, and the zero meaning that's the vertical distance, okay, uh, j is the vertical component, okay, um, Zero is the horizontal distance, and one is the vertical distance. Now, every other resultant, okay, because every vector is some resultant of other vectors, right? Okay, unless it's vertical or horizontal, then it's just different itself. But every other resultant or any other vector that you ever come across can be written as a sum or difference of multiples of i and j. So I can I can take that vector w, okay, the vector w, which is three of fifths comma four fifths, uh, and I can say, well, that's three fifths of d, three fifths i, and four fifths j, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So multi, I can multiply that i by three fifths, multiply that j by four fifths, and I can express w in terms of the unit vector. And when we do that, it will open the door for us to address some situations um, a lot easier in regards to uh, our algebra, okay? Um, for instance, if we go to that airplane question, the airplane question said, we're going to be traveling north at 300 miles per hour, and then we're going to hit a 30-mile-an-hour crosswind, okay? We want to know what the resultant is, okay? Well, if this is V and this is u, this would be v plus u, okay? To find v plus u, to find maybe the direction of that, 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 that resultant and the, the length of that resultant, is going to be not extremely difficult, but it's going to be harder if we just rely on the law of cosines, okay? There's going to be some uh, several steps that um, we have to complete every time that may seem a little bit uh, over the top. So if I take V and U and rewrite them so that they're in I and J form, okay, um, then all I have to do to find V plus U is add the I's of U and V and then add the J's of U and V. Does that make sense? So, so it's going to open the door to make things a little bit easier for us in regards to our, to our algebra uh, because of ultimately these properties we talked about yesterday. Um, all right, so... These vectors, I and J, are important to express them because every other vector can be expressed in terms of them. Okay, and here we see at the bottom so the vector V, which we have as A1 comma A2, can be expressed in terms of I and J simply by taking and realizing that that, that number right there, that A1, is simply a horizontal distance. 
the horizontal component for vector v. So whatever that is times i, which is the unit vector in the horizontal position, so it's just going to keep the multiplying a sub 1 by 1. Okay. Um, I can rewrite uh, v as a1 times i, and a plus a2 times the vertical vector is j. Okay. So if everyone, a vector is i and j form, or we'll say, so we'll use to say unit vector form. Um, if I have, let's say, vector v equal to, you know, 3 comma negative 2, then in a unit vector form, that's 3 i's minus 2 j's, okay? Which is another way of writing that, and sometimes you see it this way, it's 3 1 comma zeros minus 2 0 comma 1's. Because remember, that is the i vector, and that is the j vector, okay? So 3, negative 2, visually, can be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Moving 3, 3, 1, comma, zeros, where there is 1, 1, comma, 0 vector. There is 2, 1, comma, 0 vectors. And there is a third 1, 0 vector. Does that make sense? So that would be my 3. That would be i, i, and i, giving me 3i total. Um, now I have a negative. So it's plus a negative 2. So it's going to be moving down uh, 0, 1 vector. So there's 1, 0, 1 vector. There's 2, 0, 1 vectors. So there's a j. There's a j making this negative 2j because uh, we're moving down. So... My resultant, which this was the vector here that was expressed as v, okay, that vector v can be um, expressed using those blue horizontal and vertical vectors. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think that's earth shattering or should be something that's kind of blowing your mind away right now, but is it? Okay, it's just a bunch of, you know, essentially distances of one um, kind of tip to tail uh, in both directions to, to get that vector. Um, and, and, it, and it comes pretty naturally from uh, the way we write the component form of a vector. Okay? So in this case, it's just saying write the vector uh, 5 comma negative 8 in terms of i and j. So what are you, you going to write that? So we 5 times i minus 8 times j. That's all you got to do. Okay. Meaning that if the vector u, which is actually the vector that's in the, the, in the third, the sorry, fourth quadrant, um, you're going to move 5 units to the right, 5 1 unit vectors to the right, and then 8 uh, 1 unit vectors um, down. And that would, that would be same result, resulting location as the vector u would. Okay. Um, so basically what those are are the, the legs of the right triangle that exists for your resultant in a hypotenuse. Okay. Uh, so this u, and this, this is this is kind of where um, this is going to kind of introduce us uh, to some of the algebra that we're going to do um, inside that story problem here in a little bit. Where it says if u equals 3i plus 2j, and v equals negative 1i plus 6j, write 2u plus 5v in terms of i and j. Um, well, the first thing we have to do is find what 2u is. Okay. Well, 2u is going to be, you know, I put a 2 here, and then I would have to multiply over here by a 2, right? Does that make sense? So 2u is going to be 6i plus 6i plus 4j. Is that okay with everybody? And, and that's because we've already shown the properties of algebra that exist with vectors, and, and the distributive property exists. Okay? Um, 5v would be taking this thing and putting a 5 out here, distribute that 5. So I should get negative 5i plus 30j. 
All right. Uh, so kind of think about what's happening here with a picture. Um, we have this vector u, which is 3i plus 2j. So you 1, 2, 3, 2j. So we have that vector right there. That's u. We have the vector v, which is negative 1 plus 6. be that vector maybe right there okay and what we're going to do is say what if we could cut and paste two of these u's and cut and paste five of these v's okay and then put them tip to tail what would that final result look like does that make sense okay um well if these both are in i and j format then two u plus 5v will simply be 6i plus 4j plus negative 5i plus 30j. And that's going to give me then, uh, what, 1i plus 34j's. So you can kind of see if I were to take this thing all the way up to 34 up here. Okay, the resultant of all of those vectors would be kind of that, that green vector. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, in that, that, obviously, that algebra is a little bit easier to do. A little bit easier to do with the algebra than it is the geometry. Okay. Um, we don't want to have to graph that. And, and also inside this is wrapped up the magnitude of V. Or, or sorry, the magnitude of uh, 2u plus 5v. Uh, I can find the length of that pretty easily using these two numbers. Uh, and I can also find the direction of it for the, the angle theta uh, for that. And we'll get to that here in the next couple slides. Um, all right, so it says let v be a vector in the plane with the initial point at uh, the origin of the direction of v is theta. Uh, small response to the angle change position form by positive x axis. Uh, we see this in, it, it, and these were the formulas that you guys were given. Um, I forget uh, what the, the notation is in um, physics, but you were maybe told that this is some force, and this is some force. And I don't know, it's maybe force one, force two, I don't know what it's called in physics. Um, and then you were told to memorize. You guys worked in incline planes in physics, right? For a box on uh, that red vector, it's like, okay, uh, what are the forces trying to play? You got gravity, you got normal forces, you got forces that are trying to uh, get that thing slide down, uh, that vector back down towards the origin. And, and basically, what we'd be interested in in physics class is, um, well, you've got a normal force that's a force that is uh, kind of perpendicular to the plane, right? Okay. You've got gravity here. Uh, what we'd be interested in are what are the forces required to try and keep that box or whatever it is, maybe it's a wheelchair or whatever, keep it stationary on that plane. Okay, what forces do I have to apply um, going up that vector to keep that thing from moving back down? Okay, um, and, and those are the things that you worked on in physics. And you were probably provided these formulas and you're told to memorize them, but I hope, hopefully, you, you recognize that you don't really need to memorize them. If this is my vertical distance, a vertical component, and this is my horizontal component, and I know the result, I know the length of uh, that result, okay? I know the length of that inclined plane, um, I can find the vertical component by saying the vertical component. Now we're going to say theta. So I know theta. I know the multiply both sides by that denominator. I multiply both sides by that denominator. Do I get that? Okay. Okay. Uh, and then 
same thing that the one that was on the horizontal form based on. Um, so when you provide those as physics, they are verified, provided to you as formula XECU, but my hope was to get you as X plus pro. Okay. Um, and if you forgot them at any point, you can use Sobatoa to generate them again. Um, but they put, provide them in this form because we're going to use them a lot in that form. Um, so they're there thinking that we'll save you a step of having to use Sobatoa each time and it's less formula in it in regards to um, Sobatoa trying to multiply that. Does that make sense? Um, if we have time, uh, uh, we'll do a couple inclined plane questions in the next couple days. You guys like those in physics? No, yeah, yeah. I'll do a couple of those things and we'll do those back. Um, right. So, that being said, uh, if we know the magnitude and direction of a vector, so now, now we're kind of working the other way around, okay? Now we know um, absolute value V, or I guess the magnitude of V, we know that, we know the length of the vector, uh, and we know its direction. So we know some angle measurement uh, that is providing the direction of our vector. If I want to uh, determine what V is in component form, okay, or in uh, unit vector form, we can use that previous picture to say that if I know that's my resultant V, and I want to put it in regards to that distance and that distance. All I have to do is apply a picture of the toa, and I take the absolute value of v or the magnitude of v times cosine of theta, and that's going to give me my horizontal distance. Okay. I'll take the absolute value of v or the magnitude of v and multiply it by sine of theta. That's going to give me my vertical component. And then in regards to i and j, I simply take the vertical component and the horizontal component and multiply them by i and j. So there is the horizontal component multiplied by i, and there is the vertical component multiplied by j. Okay. Um, because, you know, so this is just, if you really sit and think about it, you're going back to 10th grade geometry here and determining what the side lengths of a triangle are, provided you know an angle and just one side length. And that one side length is basically going to be the hypotenuse, the result. Okay. Uh, so we're going to use that formula, okay, uh, right here, quite a bit in the next couple slides to uh, take a take a vector uh, in which I know the magnitude and direction of and, and put it down into its horizontal and vertical components. Because putting it in its horizontal comp vertical components actually makes it a little bit easier to add multiple vectors together. All right, so here we got a situation where uh, they're telling you, uh, a vector v has a length of 8, so that right there, when it says it has a length of 8, that is telling me that the magnitude is 8. And it says a direction of pi over 3, that means that theta is pi over 3. Okay? So without drawing, you can draw a picture. If you ever get stuck with these and you're not sure what to do, draw the picture. And then hopefully the picture will open your eyes to Sokotoa. But if we don't necessarily need a picture, we could say that V in terms of I and J, V, vector V, is going to look like, okay, it's the magnitude of V, cosine theta times I, plus then the magnitude of V times sine theta times J. The way I remember I and J, because people do confuse those, which one's which? I and X and cosine are alphabetical. They all come first before sine, J, and Y, don't they, respectively? Uh, so I is always your, your X or horizontal um, unit vector. So now vector V is equal to 8 cosine of pi over 3 times i plus 8 sine pi over 3 times j. So 
So now what is what's cosine of pi over 3? 1 half, so I get 4 times i. And what is sine of pi over 3? Radical 3 or 2, so I get 4 radical 3 times j. Okay. Now, kind of open your eyes to why this would be beneficial. What if I tell you I have another vector that has a length of 3 and an angle of, uh, I don't know, negative pi over 6. And I ask you to find out what vector z plus this new vector look like, what the results of them are. That's kind of hard in length and direction format, but it's pretty easy in i and j format. Does that make sense? Okay, so, um, <coughs> And we'll get to that example, that idea, when we get to um, our story problem. Okay. Is that all right? Can we do that? Um, this one down here says find the direction of the vector u equals negative root 3i plus j. Um, the only thing with the, you can do this without a picture, uh, because this is this is your vertical, this is your horizontal, okay, uh, and to find a direction, theta, it's always going to be tangent inverse of your vertical divided by your horizontal. Okay, now when I do that, my calculator is going to spit back negative 30 degrees. Okay, but this is the reason why I'd want to picture because that negative 30 degrees is not my answer. Okay, because that vector, if it's negative 30 degrees, it's telling me my vector should reside, my resultant should be in the fourth quadrant. And this is negative 3i, and what that is in regards to horizontal movement, and 1j, is that in the fourth quadrant? No, it's in what quadrant? Second quadrant. Okay, so a, a quick little sketch here would tell me that we're going to use negative radical three i's. So there would be, oh, that's terrible. There would be one i in that direction, and then there would be kind of the 0.7 uh, that we need of i to get a total of negative radical three i's. Does that make sense? And then I need a j in that direction, so maybe that's a length of one. If I want to find the direction of this thing then, okay, we first need to figure out what this angle here is. I'll call it just theta bar. So I type in my calculator, I go tangent inverse of one over negative root three and my calculator spits back negative 30 degrees. Negative 30 degrees would have been that angle, right? How does that angle of negative 30 relate to this theta bar? What kind of angles are they from geometry? We've got two angles like this. That angle and that angle, they are vertical, aren't they? What's the relationship between vertical angles? They're the same. They're congruent. Okay. So this angle right here, 30 degrees. Make sense? So the direction, remember the direction is always off of positive x-axis. How big is that? 150. Okay. So theta is 150. Can we do some work here to find the length of V? The length of this red vector here? Do you know it's horizontal distance? Do you know it's vertical distance? You take root 3 squared plus 1 squared. Gives me 2. Okay. So we can go from both kind of format and convert over to the other form. We can go from uh, length and direction and change it over to horizontal and vertical components. Or we can start with vertical and horizontal components and change it over to length and direction, okay? Um, now, a lot of times in the problems that we do, changing over to horizontal and vertical components 
is going to be the kind of the route that we want to take because it makes things a little bit easier. Okay. Um, kind of want to, I want to go back because I think I think we're going to have a little bit of time here. Go back to part A real quick. All right, so I said, um, you know, we found this V to be, was it 4I plus 4 root 3 times J, right? Okay. And I told you maybe we have another vector U. If I have another vector U, and I say it has a length of, um, let's just say 4, but in a direction of negative pi over 6. Okay. Let's put u okay, with this, this vector. So that if you kind of visualize that vector, it would be maybe that vector right there. Does that make sense? Okay. If I imagine vector v, vector v might be that one right there. Does that make sense? Okay. My goal is to find out what the resultant is. The resultant of these two things would be maybe that dotted vector. Okay. Now that's kind of hard. that's going to be hard to do with the geometry that we currently have. Or if I take u and put it into um, i and j format, meaning that I go um, four cosine of negative pi over six times i plus four sine of negative pi over six times j. What's the cosine of negative pi over 6? Yeah, radical 3 or 2, right? So this should be 2 radical 3 times i. What's the sine of negative pi over 6? Negative 1 half, so this should give me negative 2 j, right? Okay. So now, to find this result in here, that is u plus v, all I have to do, guys, is take that and take that, because those are u and v. Add their i components, so 4 plus 2 root 3. And then add their j components, so 4 root 3 minus 2 times j. Okay, That then is my resultant, u plus v. Okay. Now... I can then use the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent inverse to rewrite that in regards to length and, and direction. Does that make sense? Okay, because the 4 plus 2 radical 3 to 4 plus 2 radical 3 will be the dotted vector is my result. That difference right there would be 4 plus 2 radical 3. Okay, I root vector. Even though it's still some work, it's a lot easier than trying to uh, use law of cosine. That, that's our other alternative. Okay. So let, let's get to the airplane question. And, and the airplane question is going to incorporate that uh, concept right there. All right, so at the beginning, we kind of talked about uh, the airplane is going to be flying north. There's going to be somewhat of a a wind that, that provides assistance here. Uh, sometimes the wind can uh, slow you down. It could be a headwind. Uh, and then you would apply kind of the same procedures. Uh, so you just got to pay attention to whether it says tailwind, headwind, crosswind, that kind of stuff. Um, but what's happening here, and I don't, I don't like their picture or the picture that I've cut and pasted here. Um, so let's draw a, a new one here. We have... some vectors here okay, and it doesn't matter where we start so if we want to start at zero zero we can but I'm just going to start just randomly out here in the first quadrant that is our airplane vector okay that is vector v um, and it's moving 300 miles per hour so there's our magnitude okay um, and the direction of north 
Okay, so we, we can figure out our theta from that here in a moment. Uh, as it's flying, it's um, interacting with these crosswinds, okay? So all of these little U vectors, okay? Um, and, and a lot of times that U vector might be just kind of drawn there. So that's U, okay? Now, if I want to see what the resultant is, these two, geometrically, these are tail to tail, aren't they? Can't we do this? Does that make sense? And now the resultant would be that green vector. So the green vector would be U plus V, the blue one plus the red one. And that is what we're trying to address. We're trying to figure out what is that U vector. Because it looks at, it should be bigger than 300, shouldn't it? And it looks like it's going to be at an angle that's a little bit maybe less than 90 degrees because that red vector is straight to work, right? Okay. So it's just kind of geometric putting things together there. Um, we can kind of see uh, maybe what we're going to kind of experience in regards to results here. All right, so here's... Again, just, just breaking down the, the question real quick. It says an airplane had to do north at 300 miles per hour. Experiences a 40 mile an hour crosswind flowing in the direction of 90, uh, or sorry, north 30 degrees east. We'll have to talk about what that means here in a moment. Um, and we get this picture. Now the question is, express the velocity of the airplane relative to the air and the velocity U of the wind in component form. All that means, guys, right here, of the airplane relative to, to the air, that just means don't worry about what the wind is doing to the airplane uh, in, in this first thing. So we're going to try to figure out what is, if I'm looking at this diagram again, they're basically asking, what is that vector, that vector V, can you put that into component form, in I and J form? Okay, so vector v okay had a magnitude it said 300 miles per hour so that that velocity i'm oh, sorry that speed sorry the speed is 300 miles per hour okay um velocity then is that speed attached with the direction of theta so it said we're going north right so what is that angle or north It'd be 90 degrees wouldn't it okay can I take that information and can I take this vector V and rewrite it now as magnitude V cosine theta times I plus magnitude V sine theta times J Should look like that. Now, a lot of these questions are going to use some numbers that are nice, like 90, 25 over 3, things like a 60 degrees, 30 degrees. So we can use our inner circle. What's the cosine of 90? Zero. So we get zero eyes. And that should make sense because we're not moving in a left and right direction, correct? Okay. And then how many J's do you get? 300 J's. Okay, so now we have V in component form. Does that make sense? U would be that little tiny vector there, right? Okay. Um, and if we just look at it by itself. U was the wind, okay? So that had a magnitude, I think it said 40 miles per hour. But now it said, it said north 30 degrees east, right? Everybody know what that means? Yeah, it's 30 degrees to the east of north. Okay. The way I think about it is this number tells you 
set your set on your course that direction and then you're going to deviate that degree towards that direction i'm going to deviate 30 degrees towards the east okay now here's the issue the theta that we want to use is that theta so how big would that be that's 30 degrees it'd be 60. Uh, so now if I want to find u in component form, it would be magnitude u cosine theta i plus magnitude u sine theta j. So it's going to be 40 cosine 60i plus 40 sine 60j. What's cosine of 60? One half, so half of 40 is 20, so we got 20i. And then sine of 60 is radical 3 or 2, so I get 20 radical 3 j. And that is u in component form. So if I'm interested in finding the true velocity of the airplane as a vector, the true velocity of the airplane as a vector. So that is another way of saying, what's the resultant of u plus v? Okay. So that would be as a vector. So I'm going to do b down here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to say the resultant, let's just call it w, is equal to u plus v. Well, that would be 0i plus 300j plus 20i plus 20 radical 3j, right? So my resultant becomes 20 i's plus then, um, let me write it this way, 300 plus 20 radical 3j's. That would be the resultant of this situation. That would be the actual vector that my airplane is uh, taking. Does that make sense? when the wind is applied to it. So now what to address part C, because, uh, I mean, looking at this, maybe we don't really understand what, that there's a speed and a direction encapsulated in that, uh, or maybe we can't look at that and say, I know what the speed is by looking at those numbers, and I know what the direction is by looking at those numbers. So what we do uh, is, a uh, couple slides here. I apologize for the writing here, but... This number right here, okay, is the same thing as this, just written in decimal format. Is that all right? Okay, so it's going to make the next step a little bit easier. So we now have what u plus v is. It's 20i plus 334.64, meaning that if I'm looking at this situation, that was u, sorry, that was v, that was u, this resultant right here, Okay, can be represented by 20i plus 334.64j. Meaning that if I start here and go over 20 unit vectors and then go up 334.64 unit vectors, I should have the right triangle that exists for that red resultant. Does that make sense? And if you have that set of components, can you simply say... I'm going to take the horizontal component of 20 and square it. Take the vertical component of 334.64 and square it. Put that under the square root. So it's using the Pythagorean theorem. And now I found the length of that red vector. And the length of that red vector is the model for I. That's the magnitude. Okay. Uh, so we now know that that thing's traveling a little bit more than 335 miles per hour, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? 40 mile hour wind, kind of at the back of the plane, plane traveling 300 miles per hour on its own. That's a realistic answer, isn't it? Okay. Uh, so the direction of the plane is the direction of theta uh, of the vector w. Okay. Uh, now think about this. What we're interested in is what that angle right there would be. Okay. Is that a acute angle in a right triangle? That red angle is an acute angle. Hypotenuse is that vector. Leg is that vector. Can I say 
That's the tangent inverse. Tangent inverse of the 334.64 divided by formula is equal to theta. What is that? Opposite over adjacent. When I do that, I get 86.6 degrees. 86.6 degrees. So, what's my resultant? If that is um, W, or what we're saying is U plus V, then this angle here is 86.6 degrees. Now, in the navigation world, we never talk about that 86.6 degrees because it's not in regards to north or south. Okay? So I want to write it as a direction. You're going to have to do this in your homework. We always talk about, we always go north, north, south, and finish with east or west on either of those. So this one's starting north, and then you're going to deviate that amount towards the east. Okay? So that amount would be approximately 86.6, right? We'll finish up that tomorrow. Um, talk about those bearings again. Uh, and hopefully, we can wrap up.